Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to part one of two videos I'll be sharing here on my YouTube channel concerning Paper Glaze, which is a product from Picket Fence Studios. Um, I've used some Paper Glaze in the past, but a few weeks ago, that's how old this footage is. A few weeks ago, I decided to explore the different additives that you can put in your paper glaze to get different finishes. So I'm going to be using two colors today, this uh, purple shade, which I cannot even pronounce the full name, and then also peony pink. I'm going to be showing three examples. I've got two different additives from Picket Fence to add, and the first one is called Paper Glitz, which is a product that you can use on its own, but mixed in with Paper Glaze, it just gives a different finish. So since I'm using two colors, I'm putting two different uh, little puddles of Paper Glitz onto my Tonic Easy Clean Mat. This is just a slick surface that's going to allow me to clean up this Paper Glaze product very easily when I'm done. I'm taking the purple shade and I'm gonna mix it in to the Paper Glitz. Now this Paper Glitz is going to soften the color just a tiny bit because it is diluting it, but it's also going to give it a little bit more of an iridescent shine. It gives it a little bit of a shimmer. It just, it changes the look of the color just a little bit. And stay tuned because I will show all three examples side by side and you'll be able to see the difference between all of these finishes. I've done the same with the peony pink and mix that in. And I'm going to use this stencil. This is the Whimsical Heart stencil from Honeybee. And I'm going to do the exact same application of these products for all three examples. So I'm not going to be speeding up the video footage at all because I want you to see how long it takes to actually accomplish this. And also just to take note of the particular technique that I use to get a blended uh, application between two colors. So I first applied the purple up in the top left corner, cleaned off my palette knife, and I'm gonna come in with a little bit of the pink and just kind of put the pink right over the bottom edge of that purple and I'm swishing around, sort of mixing the color on my project and then swiping down and uh, kind of scraping off any of that excess and moving it to the bottom. I'll clean off my palette knife again and pick up just the pink color. So it's the full pink color, no purple mixed in, down in the bottom corner. And I'll sort of get that all applied. And then I'm going to scrape my palette knife over the surface to pick up all the excess product. So when you apply it this way, you're going to have sort of that transition phase right there in the center going from purple to pink. It's a great way to get an ombre effect. Um, you just have to remember to clean off your palette knife frequently. I just have a cloth or a paper towel off to the side. So I take off the stencil and I'm going to immediately go clean off that stencil in a sink with a little bit of soapy water and also a stiff brush. So here's what that looks like when it's completely dry. You can see it gives it sort of a metallic sheen. Now I'm gonna move on to Paper Glaze Enhancer. This one is also really fun. It has this very foamy, uh, cloud-like texture. It's very interesting. It, uh, on the bottle, it recommends to mix it uh, in equal quantities with Paper Glaze. And this is a really fun product because as you mix it, it not only changes the color of the paper glaze, it makes it just a little bit lighter, but it changes the overall texture. It makes it very soft, foamy. Um, it makes it more matte. It's not going to be shiny anymore. And it's just a really fun way to kind of stretch your paper glaze. Now, I'm sure you could probably use the Paper Glaze Enhancer and also the Paper Glitz. Uh, mix it in with other, other products that are on the market. Uh, for this video, I only tested it with Picket Fences Paper Glaze, which is what they suggest you use it with. But you could probably try on it with a bunch of other products if you wanted to. So after I applied the purple, I'm gonna go and mix in that pink. And it really is like folding in some ingredients into um, like the batter for a cake. Sometimes you have to like fold in some uh, whipped up egg whites. That's what it kind of feels like. If you've ever done that for any recipes, it kind of feels like that. 
So applying the pink, squiggling that over that center area and trying to get that those colors mixing. And then I'm going to uh, clean off my palette knife and then pick up some of that straight pink shade because I don't want to mix it with the purple because I want just the pink in the bottom corner. So I'll apply that to the bottom corner, making sure I fill in all of those areas on this whimsical heart stencil. And then I'm going to clean off my palette knife and scrape everything. That's going to clean it up and make sure I don't have any crazy thick areas. So I'm going to clean up my palette knife and then I'm going to remove that stencil. And once again, I'm going to take the stencil uh, to my sink and clean it off immediately. Uh, if you want a recommendation on the brush I use to clean stencils, I'll have that linked down in my supply section. It's actually a nail brush. Uh, so I have a couple different brushes at my sink. I've got a nail brush to actually clean my nails. And then I have a, a brush that I use for stencils. All right, so here's paper glaze by itself with no additives. I'm putting on that purple in that top corner. You can tell already just from the application that this has a different texture. It's uh, much more creamy. Creamy is not quite the right word because the other two were creamy as well, but this has um, like a saturation to it. Um, it has more of the consistency of a soft butter. That's what I would call it, like a very soft, smooth butter. Whereas the other ones were almost more like a, a whipped butter, if that makes sense. Gonna add that pink right over that transition area, squiggle it in, kind of mix those colors the best that I can. And then I'm going to clean off my palette knife like I did with the previous applications and uh, get some more of the pure pink from my jar. And that's how you can get a really good mix, um, but still have that pure color on the one end. I'm taking my time mixing these all in and making sure I fill in that whole area. All right, so now I'm hoping I'm gonna clean off my palette knife here in a minute. Come on, past Christina, do what I'm saying. Okay, there we go, cleaning off my palette knife. And I'm gonna go into that jar and get some more of that pink. So I'm gonna apply that to that bottom corner. I'm really trying to not have too much product on my palette knife because I don't want to waste any. Since I am mixing colors on this, I can't take the extra product and put it back in the jar. So I'm trying to be very careful as I apply this. That's one of the reasons why it was taking me a little, a little longer to kind of mix and get everything going. So I'll clean off my palette knife and then I'm going to peel off this stencil and you'll be able to see uh, the design here. Filling in those little corners and peel up the stencil. Like I said before, I'm going to take this to a sink and immediately clean off the stencil while that dries. So here are the three different finishes. Um, this first one has the paper glitz mixed in. The middle one is the paper glaze enhancer. And then the one over on the far left is actually, no, that's the, that's the paper glitz, that first one. Okay. Over here, we've got the, um, original. This is the original right here. You can see how it has a very shiny finish. Um, it's a little bit transparent. You can't see it on top of the white cardstock, but if I had another design underneath, you would see that it was a little bit transparent. And then we're going to compare it to the one with the paper glitz mixed in. You could see it changes the look of it just a little bit. And you could probably mix in even more paper glitz and get it even more iridescent and more shimmery. But this was a pretty mild mix in. Okay, so now we're going to compare the original to the Paper Glaze Enhancer. And this is a definite different look. The Paper Glaze Enhancer has that matte finish. It almost looks like it's puffed up from the surface of the paper. It almost has a faux flocked look. It looks like flocking, but it's not that soft velvety texture that you would get with actual flocking. It just has the look of it. It's a very, very interesting product. I kind of want to experiment some more with it. All right, so I'm going to uh, compare these uh, these two again. Once again, I'm going to do the, the paper glitz. You can see the difference there versus the paper glaze enhancer. All right, so here are the three 
different examples for today. Like I said, this is part one. I'm going to have another video for you tomorrow uh, where I just play with some paper glaze. So you'll actually see me use uh, one of these backgrounds and turn it into a card. You can see it right here. Um, I'll show that card creation in part two of this little mini series here. Thanks for joining me today. Check out all the products that I've used today down in the video description below. Um, I'll have the palette knife, my tonic easy clean mat, the stencil, everything you've seen, including those additives that I put into my paper glaze. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you guys tomorrow for part two.